So, I'm out here in Moab, and I met up with my sister and brother-in-law in their new Gladiator. And what are we gonna do? We're gonna make the steering better. He's been complaining about some problems, you know, getting over 65 with it, not really enjoying the way it feels. So, I told him about our products, and we're gonna show him what the Steer Smarts difference is all about. And while we're at it, I'm gonna show you that this is something that you can do in your driveway. I'm doing it here at the parking lot at the condo that we're staying at. So just to prove out that this is something that is not crazy, as long as you follow the instructions correctly and torque everything appropriately, you can do it. And I'm even gonna align it out here as well. We've got our, our tow plates out here. So once we get everything installed, that will be the final step before we go and take up our test drive. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jack this thing up and then put some jack stands on. All right, we've got the wheels off. We've got the front skid plate off. And now we're gonna take the bolts on this, the nuts off of here. We're gonna take all those off. And then we're gonna take the ones off on this knuckle. And then we'll remove that stuff and we'll have some room to work. We'll be able to get the track bar out and also we'll drill a hole um, over on the side for the stabilizer relocation bracket. So as you can see, we got the tie rod off. Removed the stabilizer. We left it attached to the tie rod because we're gonna be putting ours on. Now we're loosening the drag link bolt, which is pretty much done over there. And we're up here working on the pitman arm, getting that off. So once we get that loosened up, we'll be using our pickle fork to get that bad boy out. So here we go, keep on working on it. Your friend, the BFH in the handheld version. And then your pickle fork, you're going to put it up there against Pittman, and then we're going to go ahead and hit this in there until we get this taper to break, the taper lock to break and come out. All right, so we got the drag link off. We got the tie rod off. Now we need to get the track bar out. And now we're loosening the track bar bolt so that we can install the stabilizer relocation bracket. So what I'm gonna do now is get this hole drilled for the secondary bolt. You're gonna go ahead and use your new track bar bolt to hold it in place. You don't have to torque it down yet or anything because the only thing you're using this for is just to line it up so you can get this nice and straight across because you want that in a good plane for going down to your track, your tie rod. And then once you've got that there, you're just gonna go ahead and mark where you want to drill. And then you're gonna start drilling. Start with a smaller bit and work your way up until you're to the correct size. So normally you would use a marking divot tool or something. I'm just gonna use this to mark the spot where I need to drill it because it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Just need to make a mark and that's what I did. I made a mark so I know where to drill now. And again, I'm gonna start with something, I'm gonna start with something small, small bit. I'm just making this a little bit more visible for myself, give myself a good start. Just wanna make sure you got some good, good sharp bits. Line it up where you're gonna start here. And then give you a whole start. You got your first one started and then work your way up until you're big enough to fit the smallest bolt that comes in the kit until that fits through. Here we go. So now, once we're ready for our track bar, we can go ahead and install this at the same time. And we're gonna be in the home stretch because that's really the hardest two parts of this whole install are drilling this hole and getting the pitman arm off from the stock drag link. Now we're assembly, length measuring, installing, and then torquing. And then we'll go out, well, we won't torque, we'll measure the front end and do an adjustment for the toe. 
because we've got our toe plates. And after that, we'll do our final inspection. We'll torque everything down and then go get a chest strap. Just a little bit, huh? He's commenting about the difference in the weight of the track bar versus the stock one. He's a girthy beast. I think the stock one's about eight pounds and ours is, I think, 25. Just to give you an idea of the difference in weight. So, what you're gonna do is you, I wouldn't put the paint on the pavement necessarily. Okay. Pull out some cardboard if you want to, put, or set it on the top of it maybe, just because you'll chip it. Um, those clamps you're gonna want, yep, like that. They're gonna go on the, uh, face them each the same way, like with the, you nope, know, so you turn it, there you go. That way they're congruent. And then you're gonna take your never, your anti seize that we talked about, and you're gonna just lightly coat each end. I'll help you get those, they can be a little tricky sometimes the little hole, like the little edge of the clamp. Line it up with the opening, maybe. You know, like they'll slit, kind of. And then that gives you a little bit of an edge to get it in there. Uh, there you go. Looks like you got the first edge in. I've done it a couple more times than you. anti So you're gonna anti-seize these just lightly. Yeah, just like and they're reverse threaded? Correct, so they're only gonna go on one side. Now, I'm gonna tell you the trick. Let me tell you right now. Let's see if it's this side or the other side. Short, see how they're on the collar here? There's nothing, and then there's two slits. That's gonna be the short end side. It's gonna go to the two slit side. Long end's gonna go to the one without a slit. And then, like I said, you're just gonna lightly coat even just the bottom half of them, because as you spin it in, it's gonna move that seize across all the threads. And if for some reason you don't do it in enough, then you'd have a bunch on the outside. So yeah, so you're a little bit off. So what we'll do, So it'll keep this in the position we got it, which is pretty close to This thing's so heavy. It's 90 something. It goes up to 130. Am I doing right now? Yeah. That side's good. So now we're gonna get the drag link set up. So see what we did here? We just take the zerk out, loosen it. Loosen the zerk. This is the passenger side end, which is what has our no flop in it. So that there are two different size gaskets. The, th the thicker gasket goes on the passenger side knuckle. And this is for both the tie rod and the drag link. You just run this around the outside like this. Then you put your cap on. And you just put your zerk back in. And you tighten it down. And your cap cap will be installed. So you're going to have, on your tie rod ends, you're going to have a coated washer, a taper sleeve, I mean, coat a taper sleeve, a washer, and your nut. And the way the stack up goes is, this goes on the bottom, it's gonna go underneath the knuckle, this is gonna go on top of the knuckle, between the nut and the knuckle boss. And the importance of this is, this is coated to keep it from galvanically corroding into the aluminum knuckle. So now that I've explained that, let's go ahead and get it put on. So that's gonna go. All right, so when you get to this point, you're tightening it down and the stud is just spinning inside. What do you do? You get your eight millimeters Allen hat key out and you put it in there and that's what's gonna hold it in place while you tighten it down. Okay, so go ahead and put that on there and see where we're at. Not there yet. So we put the key back. We put this back on. 
put the Allen key back in and we tighten it again. And then we'll check it again after we've tightened it more. There it is. It made it already. It already did it right away. As soon as it, as soon as it's so we're good. Here, let me, I'll help you. There you go. So again, here we are. We got the taper washer, the, wa the, t the coated taper, the washer, and then you're not. And then we're gonna use the Allen key again to hold this in place while we tighten this down. There it is, we good. Let's put these tow plates on. And we can get the tow line. Can you screw them back on? Yeah, you can. Just keep it in place or whatever. All right. So my phone was out of memory and I didn't realize it and we didn't record the alignment. On to the next morning, we go. So we ran out of daylight last night and we're gonna finish up the rest of everything today, which is really just adjusting the drag link. So the steering wheel is straight. We got everything else buttoned up on it. We got everything on. So we'll go ahead and we'll adjust the drag link and we'll take it for a quick spin and make sure it doesn't need to get anything else adjusted. And then we will put the skid plate back on and he will be good to go. Um, the only thing we didn't put on were the end links and that was because and it appears that it's a little bit narrow on this one. So we gotta, he's gotta take it home, put a little heat on it and just bend it out a mil or two so we can fit everything appropriately. But otherwise, everything is on there and looking good. We're gonna center steering the wheel. steering wheel, yep because really that's all we got left at this point. Um, so go ahead and start it up and put your window down. So what you want to do is you want to go straight. So regardless of where the wheel is straight, the vehicle itself needs to travel straight. So drive forward a little bit, like drive to like, to where that pole is just straight ahead, you know, like, so that, that it travels straight. Okay, you can just stop now. Now back up, keeping it so that it continues to go straight. All right, that's good right there. And then go ahead and stop. And stay in there. Is it going the right way yeah. or the other? Yeah, that's good. Keep going that way. Go ahead and turn the car off. Okay, is it going the right way or the wrong way? It's the right way. Okay. Keep going, keep going. Let's go give it a quick spin and see she how she do. Should we go on the yeah, main road? Yeah, and go left. Because it's uh, that's 55, so. I mean, the, the idea is you were having issues above 65. Yeah. So let's get to 55, make sure we're good, and then let's go above and see how, she, how it feels. 65, it cruised, 75, 80, it was a disaster. I just wanted to walk all over the place. Never got any kind of shakes or anything, just yeah. stable. It already feels tighter. Like, yeah. Like more uh, refined. Even at low speeds.
Yeah, I mean the steering wheel looks real close. We could we could make a slight adjustment, but it's it's, it's up to you after you you know after you drive for a little bit. I don't know if there's any like, crosswind or anything, you know, or if there's a crown on the road. Those yeah. those are the things that can make it feel like it's not completely centered. But yeah. again, it's a super easy adjustment. It's those two clamps. You just loosen them and then have a shell sit inside or whatever, and then you just yeah. tell her or you have her turn it a tiny bit. Either way, it's just minute changes. Let's see if we can get up to like 70 and see if it feels any better. I, mean, I don't see any shakes in the wheel or anything. No. It's stable. And it's driving straight too. Yeah. And this is where you're starting to feel kind of shady before, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't see any wobbles. I don't see any kind of like, it's not pulling. I mean, you're barely touching the wheel with your yeah. hand. Like no. I feel like you could do with your pinky or something if you want. Sure. Wow. Straight. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> we'll, we'll it with two pieces of aluminum. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. I'd say it was a success. Yeah. Cool. That's badass. Yeah, I can tell by how little you're, like, you're, like, two finger yeah. touching it. And yeah. it, the wheel doesn't move anywhere. Like, I like I could, to drive with one hand. And yeah. And you felt Before. like you couldn't. No. Yeah, it's white knuckle. I was always like white knuckling, right? Yeah. Well, that's a, that's awesome. That's probably the way to go. It's super close it right looks now. Looks like it would be like just a quarter turn. It's going to be from the it's going to be very very minute. Like it might even be like you turn it a little bit and then slightly turn it back where you were. Like you know what I mean? Like if you overturn a tiny bit and then yeah. turn back in, it's yeah. sometimes those little bit of a weird. But that's dead center. I'm yeah. Not touch that. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying, like with the wind or the. So yeah. drive it a little bit more because sometimes you just have to have a little more input because the yeah. steering box isn't as fast as like a car, right? Like on a, in your Tesla, for example, you make a, a quarter turn and your wheels are turning way more on that than they are on this. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it feels super smooth. Yeah. For sure. It's a huge difference. I would recommend this shit. <laughs> Noticeable difference. Yeah. Way less wander, way less overcorrecting all the time. A much more connected, like, feel is what I always. Yeah, I agree with that. 